Yo, welcome to the second episode of First with Foremost. Uh, once again, I'm Dustin. What's I'm Andrew. Up? Hey, hey. All right. So I think we are, uh, we're going to talk about some gear tonight, right? Hell yeah, man. Let's get into Sick. that. I was well, thinking you... just like talking about uh, maybe the gear that we use to record all this, the first EP. Dude, I could talk about, I'm, I'm a bass player, man. I could talk about gear. You're asking a, a bass player to talk about gear. This is, you're we're gonna have to extend this episode. <laughs> all right, well, let's start with you we're, then, man. We're gonna be an hour in, and I'll be like, "So that's the first pedal, all right?" <laughs> that's like that. But let's start, uh, let's start with your bass because you uh, you got that pretty recently after we started the band, didn't you? Yeah, dude. Um, so like, I finally decided it's time for a pick with a P bass for like some of the punk shit. Yeah. Um, so it's a, uh, Fender Nate Mandel signature P bass, which comes with Seymour Duncan quarter pounders. And mm-hmm. I pulled them out immediately. Oh, I didn't know and, that. Yeah. And put, uh, the EMG geezer butlers in there. I, I, I love the way those fucking things sound. I had them from like a parts base laying around. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to see like what's up and I threw them in there and it was like, Oh, I think that bass kind of should have came with these. Like, right. It just sounded I right. Didn't, I didn't know that you, uh, changed yeah. them out. that's what's up, man. I put those quarter pounders in another one. I have a, like, I have a, are the, a, are the quarter pounders like what came in like the hoppus bass back in the day? I think so. Or okay. a version, a version of version them. Of but, it. Okay. Yeah. Um, they're I, like. I, I've been out of the bass world so long. I forget what is what. Yeah. They're just, they don't have, I don't know. I feel like they're like almost like scooped a little bit in the mid range, but like they also don't get as like high, like twangy as, as the geezer butlers do for some reason, or just like regular, you know, whatever, yeah. some, some regular fender pickups, but like they do a certain thing really well. But like, if you're not doing that, it, it's not like as well-rounded as like to my ear. I gotcha. But I put that in a, like I have a, a, uh, like one of those sixties vibes, Squire basses. Oh, yeah, classic vibe, classic vibe ones. I put them in those. Oh, yeah, I forgot you had that bass, dude. Yeah. With flat wounds on it. Yeah, you, and it's it, dude. I forgot all about that bass. Yeah. It's there. Sick. It, it has a block inlay, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ma- yeah. Maple neck. Yep. Black inlay. Yeah. And, and it's like, what uh, the body brown. Like mm. a weird brown color. Mocha. 70s mocha. mocha. Yep. I'm a um, Greek man. I got. It's so pretty for like a. This, this Squire, uh, like the classic five ones are fucking awesome for Ooh. what they are. This thing, man. <laughs> yeah. Do that. All, yeah. This all thing. of the foremost EP songs were written on this thing. Yeah. It exactly. Sounds so good. Yeah. This one's from 08, so this is like the first run that they released, I guess. We'll get into okay. that, that yeah. later, though. But yeah, I'm telling you, man. I mean, Mike played that at the last Splashette show. Yeah. yeah, that's so sick. Yeah, right? Like, yeah. It's, it's my... Like, when I want to sit down and play the Jackson 5, when it's just me playing around, fucking around by myself, Yeah, like, that's what I grab. The Motown bass. Yeah, for sure. Hell yeah. Um, but anyways, yeah, like I have that Fender Jazz that we talked about last week that like you you played. Yeah. And I fucking love that thing. Like it's it's awesome. Yeah. It's a but, beat. You know, it, it was like the road dog for a long time. And it's like I don't know, man. <laughs> like it's sentimental to the point where I was like, I don't think I want to be like dragging this to like punk shows yeah. no. the smiling moose anymore like how, how many years have you had it i think remember, i bought rem- i remember pat being like you've had that bass that fucking long man yeah almost as as long as he's been alive right. <laughs> like a couple years after <laughs> yeah seriously um i mean i think it's a 2006 and i i bought it new right so oh it's yeah like yeah. it's not vintage but like right for me it's In like a couple years it'll be 20 years old yeah, exactly. Damn. So, um, or maybe it's an, oh, f- 
No, I think it's. I thought you got it earlier than that. Maybe I did. I don't fucking know. Don't it's know. it's like whatever. Somewhere in the mid two thousands. Yeah. Right off the shelf at Guitar Center, but I swore you said it was an O two or yeah, something. Maybe because, because you, you were be like right. it's twenty years old, and Pat was like, "That bit, you've had that for twenty fucking years." That's, that's probably. You, see, you know more about this shit than I do. Well, I uh, we talked yeah. about it at practice that day. Yeah. Um. So I was like, "All right, you know that thing just like that thing needs to just kind of." be for special occasions and recording and whatever. Yeah. Um, which is cool. So th- that Nate Mandel one is kind of like a pretty sweet spot, like price point and build quality. Like it's got a lot of shit going on. That's like super cool. So it's, it's a Mexican made, but it has a nitro finish. Ooh. So it will essentially like well, it comes, it comes, r- yeah, it comes a little bit road worn. Right. But not like anything crazy. So, like, in my opinion, it just has, like, the first time you knock your bass over is yeah. already done. It's already on there. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I just don't it's care. Dope. Like, yeah. yeah, it can fall over. I don't care. Whatever. Fucking the thing's a, a chunk of wood that makes some noise. Hell yeah, um, man. I don't have that same, like, if my jazz bass falls over, I'm like, no. Yeah. Fucking what happened? <laughs> <laughs> but no doubt, man. No doubt. It has... It has like Fender's version of like a badass bridge, right? Ooh. So it's like got that going for it. And then the neck. I didn't some... know that they private labeled a, a bridge like that. No. Yeah. That's it's cool. just, yep. And it's, I mean, is it's it, identical. What is, what is that? Is it Leo Kwan? Is that what that is? The badass yeah. series? Yeah. Is that I don't, still a thing? I don't think they're making them anymore. Excuse me. Like you can't just Google the badass bridge and buy one. You got to find a used one or. Maybe the patent ran out or something because uh, now that makes sense. N- now everyone's making one. Making like Fender one. has their own version of it. I saw like I don't know, even like like Lakeland has their version of it now. So whatever, um, they're all the same. It's just yeah, uh, it's just a big good, yeah. Good. It's just a chunk of metal, man. Because I remember when we were coming up, you could really just get that on like the Getty Lee or like yep. a signature yeah, base. Exactly. Like it didn't um, it didn't come on the Hoppus base either. No. Um, did that, that hoppus space only had volume knob too, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was cool. Yeah. Turn it up and go. BJ let me play that thing forever, dude. Shout yeah. out BJ. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then Nate Mandel likes did something with the neck to it. Like, you know, he had, it's all based off of his vintage P base that he bought forever ago. Like in, um, mm-hmm. sunny day days yeah, and for sunny day shit, which is cool. But it's, it's like, uh, it was like the first P base neck that was like not a thousand miles wide. So it's like way more mm-hmm. along the lines of like a jazz bass. I mean, it's not jazz bass yeah. neck, but like it's fucking playable right <laughs> off the bat. You don't have to like learn anything. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I, you can hand it to anyone and they're just like, yeah, cool, whatever. So uh, yeah. that was actually my learning curve with the Hoppus bass is that it had, dude. Uh, it had a P bass neck on it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this doesn't feel like my Squire jazz bass. Yeah. And then I played your bass at that show. <laughs> Dude, in those days I was into the like the OLP, like the Music Man subsidiary bass. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And when I played your jazz bass, I was like, oh, I need to go back to a jazz bass, my jazz bass, you know. And I did then afterwards. Yeah. You know. But they're just so fast. Like if you want to do noodly shit, man you just move around so quick on those necks. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, dude, I like that thing. Like I get it. You know, it's not like for everyone, but I don't know, man, I, I saw it and was like, I think course. it's awesome, man. Yeah. I, I researched that thing forever right. and was like, then I was looking at like actual vintage shit and do that price just starts going up and up and up. And I'm thinking like, well, now this is like more money than the one I'm and, trying to protect. Yeah. Right. The sentimental one. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, right. also, I'm just a dude. But, and, you know, <laughs> like I'm I not- will. I will <laughs> give it to you, man. Uh, vintage basses are way more affordable than vintage guitars. And it, yeah, I was like on Guitar Center the one day or whatever, looking for some old Dan Electro piece of shit plastic pedal that i love the aesthetic of that i want you know and (laughs) collecting stupid shit you know anyway Uh i see the prices of like 70s fender bases and i'm like what yeah that's awesome 
Yeah. Like, why not? Like, I guess if you can go to the store and play it and check it out and it like holds yeah. up, it's like, okay, you're going to pay like maybe just 500 more dollars for something from the seventies. That's like legit. Yeah. Versus a brand new one. So it's, I don't know. It's very strange. Yeah. How it, it, it is. It's, it's like specific models with the base world, right? Because of the specific players. It's very specific. And then I know also, the guitar world is like that too, but yeah, I don't know. Dude, base world gets super weird into the like pre CBS, post CBS, buy out a fender and blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. Guitars is the same way. Or the but, same way. I mean, you know, you can look at one that's, you know, one year and you're like, why is that $15,000? And then you see one that's two years later. Later. And it's, you know, whatever, four, four grand, three, yeah. 3,200, something like that, you know, whatever. But it's just such a risk online. Like, I, I wouldn't need yeah. to like play it. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm when I started out. looking at that kind of thing, you could get a Mustang base from like the seventies for under a grand. Yeah. And now I don't know how much they go for, but not that. Yeah. No, you know? I mean, everything got jacked up, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's like pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Yeah. And the thing with like the bases is, I don't know, like I'm sure there's some mojo in those old, old ones, but like, the new ones are so good. They're so good. Yeah. That it's it, like, I, I know. It, and they're, and yeah. they're lighter, you know, yeah. like yeah. people realize like, Hey, you know, yeah. like a 15 pound hunk of fucking lumber around your neck all night kind of sucks. Yeah. You know, sure. like you can get, you can get a new jazz face, like seven, eight pounds. Dude, that's you know? why I don't play my less balls. Cause it, it's fucking too heavy. heavy. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> It's wild. Yeah. I mean, but what can, what can you do, bud? I don't know. I, I actually, I, I, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's awesome. They look awesome. My Les Paul, actually, I just, the neck is kind of too thin for my taste. Okay. But it, it's like, it, it's a sleeper, man. It, it looks like a normal black beauty, but it, the neck is almost like an Ibanez because it's like 1989 or whatever. Okay. Just like super blady and like, not my style. I don't yeah. know. My hands are huge. I need a yeah. baseball bat, you know, uh-huh. but I don't know. It's strange because when I played bass, I like the jazz bass, the neck way more. But when I switched to guitar, I like a full neck way better. I mean, it, like the style. Or yeah. Whatever, neck profiles. Have you ever played a V neck profile, Dustin? I don't think so. Bro, you need to get into that. It, like, it's what, amazing. I don't, yeah? yeah. I mean, if you have big hands, right, it, it feels great. I feel like I have average just, like, sized hands. It fills up the hand almost. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah. All right. Well, we need to make a road trip to the <laughs> guitar store. Hell yeah. Let's do it. And uh, not not spend all of our money and check this shit out. Yeah, I'm, I'm into, into that. It. Super into it. What, uh, <sighs> did you play your amp or did you DI on the record? So on the record, DI. it was, yeah, we pulled three signals. We pulled uh, straight out of a DI, so bass into the DI. Then from the DI, we went into my pedal board and we pulled the, um, we pulled the, the signal out of my uh, dark glass pedal at the end of that chain. And then out of the pedal board into that like Harky combo mm-hmm. amp they had at the studio. Oh yeah. Which I tweaked that. Yeah. Yeah. I tweaked that thing for a minute and just got it like flat and ripped through it. And I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure they, we just mixed. we didn't use any of the DI signal. I think we just mixed like the Harky and then my, like the DI output of the whole pedal board. So yeah, it sounds great, man. I mean, you've got so much going on with your pedal board. I'm sure you changed it. Why don't you just give us a rundown of what you got going on right now? Yeah. So I, I haven't really First changed all, it since then. How many pedals do you have? Oh, I want to know if you have more than I do. Cause I, I always feel like because you have a switcher, it just looks like more command center. Well, than mine. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. I, uh, it's going to be embarrassing here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I got to find a picture of it because I don't even know how many fucking, uh, pedals are on there. Like, <laughs> I could try and count and I'm going to be off by like well, way too boss many. Switcher, so you can talk about that while you look. Yeah. Um, it's the, the MS three, 
So okay. it's the line switcher. They right, make a, boss. yeah, yeah. It's a boss MS three. They make a three, a five and an eight and the five and the eight are line switchers only. Right. So like, that's all they do is you can program, um, like, you know, every pedal gets its own channel and then you can actually in those ones, like move the order around, mm -hmm. which is cool, but they're big. Those are like for like yeah. spaceship stations. That one's like an old Bradshaw thing. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is only four channels. It only has three actual channels that go out to different pedals, but it's got like all of bosses, whatever, like, like all the digital processing, multi-processing stuff that like, yeah. you know, uh, another pedal would have. So like, for me, it's like, dude, if I just want to like experiment with whatever, like I can just pull that thing up and, um, all of my like reverbs, delays, phasers, like slow gears, like anything you can imagine is in there. And it's right. like pretty much, you know, like top of the line for like boss quality. Like, Dude, I mean, boss is awesome. I'm uh, yeah. I, you know, uh, I think, uh, listen, man, any of that stuff is totally passable on a recording. Like, yeah. because you can tweak so many parameters in there and some of them and you can run that... them over with a fucking car and they're going to be okay. Exactly. <laughs> and, and some of them on that thing have more controls, right? So like, whatever, think of like, um, it's got must, it's got like boss's version of a big muff pedal, right? So your big muff pedal has what volume tone volume and then and sustain and sustain, right? This has, a fucking clean blend. This has a parameter of frequency for each of the things. Like you yeah. can get super crazy in there, um, which is fucking awesome, right? Like for yeah. a bass player, any of those pedals now all of a sudden become like excessive. I, I mean, don't quote me on this, but like everyone I've went to mess with in there, they have a rat pedal. They have a, a fucking clean boost. They've got like everything, and all of it. Ha almost everyone I've tried to mess with has some version of a direct signal, essentially a clean blend that you can move in there for bass, which is fucking awesome. Um, but let's see here. I got, I got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pedals that are like pedals, right? I have a high pass filter. That's eight. The tuner is nine. And then I have a, a volume pedal, which is 10. And then I also have a fucking steel core transistor, which is just like, all right, it's not a pedal. It's just a thing on there. And then on the bottom of it, I have a, uh, just like a buffered splitter so I can split the signal out of the pedal board. Jeez Louise, man. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially you have 11 devices rolling on that. I got, I got 11 devices doing stuff on there. The, the, the steel core transistor doesn't need power though. So it's just a thing, right? It's just yeah. in between the signal, right? Yep, exactly. Cool. But yeah, that's what's up though. I have changed it <clears throat> from studio setup. I've, yeah. I've, there's like one spot on the board that I've left like super easy accessible to like kind of fuck around with. And I've, I've played around with it, but I'm back to like what was on there in the studio, which is the, uh, it's damnation audios MBD two. It's just like, a I don't know their version of a do everything bass pedal that does like super low gain, just kind of grindy stuff. Like you can do a clean boost with it or like do a mid boost. There's like a sweepable mid section with a, with a switch on there. And then it can like go into like crazy fuzz territory if you crank everything up oh, on shit. it. So yeah, I just have it as like, like I have off. It's like my clean signal, which is like a little bit dirty. And then that on is just kind of like level two gain stage. And then the, that dark glass pedal that you fucking love is like full on distortion. Yeah. So yeah, um, it sounds super gritty. Yeah. My like hardcore influence coming through. Put that grit, <laughs> put that grit on that bass, man. <laughs> yeah. The nice thing about, you know, three piece band, you know, I didn't need to make a lot of noise. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. For sure. And yeah. it's fun to like thicken everything up, you know, yeah. just add more texture to fucking when you're doing little riffy stuff over there. It's like 
there's no seal there's no floor that drops out Mm -hmm. you know what i mean like yeah i i i I hate that like and you know whatever there's nothing you can really do like no when you other than having another guitar player right exactly yeah like yeah. yeah, it's just, you know, when you see three piece bands and they're doing something, you're like, they're going to go, that guy's going to go into a solo and it's just not going to sound the same again. You know, you're like, ah, these guys are awesome, but like, there's just nothing you can do. Yeah. So writing, getting to write our own stuff with that in mind is like, it's nice. Cause you're like, dude, I'm fucking smashing this fuzz pedal when we go into this, yeah. even in the studio, like, I don't care, right. you know, like, cause that's what I want it to sound like when yeah. we play it live. Hell yeah. So, out, man. yeah yeah i think it all sounds really good i'm glad that you were able to just di the uh bass in there yeah into the for board. sure and you know again too much time on the forums like figuring out like how many fucking <laughs> signals i need out of this and blah 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 but i don't know it just works dude like all this stuff is like you know none of it's like super high end or like you know, nerd territory. Like, you know what I mean? Like I have an octave on there, but it's the OC five. It's not an old OC two that's worth, you know, a bunch of money or that was hard to get or that's weird with power. Like, you know what I mean? It's the new one. And when you're playing live and fucking jamming with a band, like there's not a human being in the world that's going to fucking notice that it's a OC five versus an OC two. Like, it's just not a thing. Yeah. So this is like that's what this is for. Is like especially how loud the deluxe is, man. It's exactly. It's cranked up. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm surprised people Pat, hear me and Pat at all. Pat, no, Pat beats the shit out of his drums. He does. Yeah. Like not in, in a good way, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Not He's, in a bad he, way. He can have a light touch because I've seen <clears throat> it at practice. Yeah. But like he's that's not what he's doing when we're playing a show, man. No. Yeah, you he's pounding on those things. His adrenaline's going up. Yeah. Yeah. Which is cool. I like that. Me too. But, uh, so signal chain on my board real quick. We'll just run through it. It goes, uh, into the high pass filter first, just clean up that like muddy low end shit. Mm -hmm. It's like set super pretty much like just to where, like just to where I can kind of like hear it, hear something happen. And then I kind of back it down a little bit. Um, and then it goes into, um, the transformer thing which is uh it's called a lightning boy audio 2020 s steel core transistor and it's essentially like yeah it's it's, numbers bro yeah uh i I don't know there's debate on whether they do anything or not i I, i've a beat it and i feel like it does something it gives like warmth man it's the same shit that it was in like old radio like broadcasting compressors and stuff like yeah. there's a specific one that this is like from right i don't re- i don't remember what that is but like whatever i ended up with one and was like fuck it i'll throw it on here um and then it goes into the fairfield circuitry um it's essentially uh like a like your jhs blues breaker overdrive mm-hmm. um morning glory the morning glory it's it's kind of like that but it's like just their version of of something like that it's like i love it for bass because it's like super sensitive to like playing style so like i can have it be like super clean and if i just dig in a little bit more it starts to like break up and growl a little bit which is i i love that because it's essentially like two pedals without having to do anything you know what i mean like just depends on what i want to do to make it sound however it's going to sound so i have that set pretty light and it's they make two versions of it i forget what mine's called but it's essentially like they make a regular pedal with an on off switch and then they make the one i have which is it's just three knobs on a tiny little thing and it's always on i got you there's no button it's just on all the time that's pretty awesome because i i pretty much just leave mine on all the time too yeah I think they got, they like, you know, again, a small company with people that listen, they got so much feedback. They're like, dude, I, you know, so many people are like, I never turn it off. Like you just said. And they're like, well, we can save you pedal board space if we just throw it, you know, without a switch. Like <laughs> yeah. I could just go in this little thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, comes out of that and then it goes into the MS3 and that's kind of like where shit gets weird, but essentially there's three outputs of that. I've got my 
compressor on one, uh, my octave, the OC5 on two, and then uh, right now the fuzz is the Earthquaker devices, uh, his Amanitas, the super weird, just fucking insane one. With the rabbits on it? Yep. Yeah. Um, super sick. I yeah. love that artwork, man. It's so cool. Yeah. I love it. So um, the compressor is a Cali 70 or an Origin 70, Origin Effects Cali 76. Um, and then those are on like the line. So I can turn those on and off without like actually touching the pedals. So like when I click the fuzz on, the compressor turns off immediately. It's like, I don't want that even getting in the way of like, I just want to smash that fuzz with all of my signal. Um, same thing if we have the octave on, the compressor gets turned off. You can program all that shit in. So it's just like whatever signal I want going into it, that's what I can do. Um, and then all the onboard effects in there, I can move around and turn on and off and do whatever I need to do. And then um, out of that, into the MBD2, out of the MBD2, into the Dark Glass, it's the Alpha Omega Ultra. So it's got like the crazy distortion channel with like two overdrives that you can blend together. And then when it's just regularly on, it's just like, a, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, like a seven band EQ. So like when we were at the Smiling Moose playing, it was super fucking boomy and low endy on stage. I can just reach down and cut it. The dog is going crazy upstairs. We got zoomies. We got zoomies. <laughs> Sick. We got zoomies. Drew's texting me too. So go on. Um, not ignoring you. Yeah, yeah, no. Trying so uh, I just have like, like in perfect world scenario, that EQ is just set flat, right? Like, so it's, it's just, it's not doing anything to the signal. I can, I can AB it on and off and you don't hear any change. But like, if we go into a room again, like the, we were sound checking at the moose and the fucking sound guys like, Hey, like you gotta, you gotta take that low end down. And I'm like, cool. I just reach down. I don't have to fuck with any of the amps that we're going into or anything like that i can just hit a knob or i mean a slider and turn the low end down eq it real quick for the room and then we're good to go we're done which is super convenient without like fucking up the rest of your signal trying to mess with stuff like that on the stage you know you're like getting ready to play a show and the sound guy's like can you fucking do this it's like bro no <laughs> <laughs> yeah but i mean i could hear that so that was like super easy to do right um man i thought your bass sounded really good at the smiling moose yeah yeah thanks man um i also that was the first time i really could hear what was going on okay vocal wise and when you were singing it was awesome thanks yeah i could hear it i was like <laughs> this is sick because <laughs> usually we were so loud it's like i can't hear I know. anything yeah you know? exactly it's also nice like being able to hear ourselves on a stage that's properly done right, you know, yeah. with the monitors or whatever's going on. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, that was fun. So that's that pedal board. And uh, I mean, you know, check us out on Instagram. I can post a picture of it on there and do a little rundown if anybody cares. Hell um, yeah, I care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't we see the practice. <laughs> But, and then, um, yeah, my, my, I guess out of the pedal board, just to wrap up what I have going on is I have an SVT, uh, three pro bass head that I kind of run just pretty flat. I don't nothing really going on there. I, I have the gain cranked like a little bit, you know, it's got a, a tube preamp to it. So like you really have to crank the grain and have or gain and have it be like really loud to get like any of that old school like svt roar out of it yeah but like you grit. know yeah it's just dude it, it's it has to be so loud for it to sound awesome like it sounds good but like to get the svt sound that you want you know what i mean like the old school like rock and roll shit that everyone had yeah it's just it's there's you can't do that at practice <clears throat> you can't you know what i mean like you need to be outside on a massive stage for it to finally do that it's finally break up that way right yeah, yeah so yeah. hence that's why the pedals exist so i can have the volume wherever i want and still get you know all that break up and stuff but yeah i mean you know yeah and then then i just run um like whatever i want whether it's the 410 or the 210 or both so yeah i like when the 610's roaring 
yeah. sounds great. Well, it's, it's the best. Yeah. 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 Again, it just helps that it helps that SVT like kind of get going. You know what I mean? Yeah. You sure. know, it, it really does. Like you don't change the volume at all and it doesn't get louder. It just sounds better, dude. It just sounds better when it has like, I don't know if it's the, the ohm load on it. Like when it cranks up, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's cranking more power, more Watts out of it, mm -hmm. but it definitely does. But that shit starts to get heavy when you got to roll it around everywhere. <laughs> 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 yeah the rack yeah well i i, I don't it, have a it fridge worth it. it sounds great man and like who cares right i it's know hard, yeah. i know that you live in a world where like bass heads are as big as a pedal sometimes now but like i tried it man i think you're yeah i think i i know you did and i think that your head sounds yeah fucking it, great yeah it's a class d so it's still not like it's not as heavy as an old classic at you know tube anything yeah. like it's still pretty light right um and you know but like you like you said man there's ones that are like the size of a fucking pedal you know and they say they're whatever 500 watts and it's like i've bought like two of those thinking i'll just have it as a backup but man I, they just they don't do it i i don't know unless someone has one that like you're like, nope, this one's the best one. They changed it. They did something. They finally figured it out. Like, let right. me know. But until then, man, I, I don't I don't think it I don't think it can happen. You right. know? Like if you really want your bass to sound right. fucking like a, gnarly and yeah. cool. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. uh, let's be honest too, like we're still in a small Pittsburgh punk band. We're not playing shows that are forcing us to have in ear monitors and like dude, half the shit all of the shows we're playing none of our stuff is mic'd or plugged into any it's like if you want them to hear you you got to turn your shit up yeah i do like, like that cool. i do like that pittsburgh is that way yeah pretty much like i don't know we maybe we just haven't played it at the right places right we'll but figure it out but we'll yeah figure it out but uh i i kind of don't care because i like yeah. i like the stage volume yeah it's what i've always been used to and i know i literally just said i can never hear shit but i can yeah. hear my guitar and i can hear the it's different, right? Whenever you're yeah. a guitar player, singer, rather than just a singer. Exactly. I'm sure if you're just a singer up there, it's fucking annoying when you can't hear anything. Oh, dude, yeah. But they like, would probably, they'd but probably like, lose their minds. I don't know, man. I, as a guitar player, I way rather feel the amp than... Yeah, oh, and as a bass player, like, yeah. I want to feel your amp, I want to hear you, and then I also want Yeah, the to bass hear... especially, yeah, I have yeah. to feel it. Like, For sure. Um uh, and then and that's the thing, man. It's like, oh, that's great if you want to put it through the PA, but I, I don't know. I've yet to play somewhere where they're like, oh, we're going to put enough stage volume in the monitors for you guys. It, like, it, it never happens. Yeah. So that's why I'm just like, I don't know. I'm not some freaking Luddite or whatever, but like, yeah. I'm resistant to in-ear monitors. <laughs> I don't know yeah. why. Especially, well, dude, especially bass coming through a little stage monitor and, and you're expecting the drummer to hear it yeah through that like it yeah. i mean if you're all on in-ears totally different story you can eq everything and it's like i'm sure it's awesome and we'll get there but like if you go like there's that and then there's like trying to like you said have the stage volume be all just mo it doesn't work man no not for you know I, it doesn't work for me rather me neither yeah I so don't, it doesn't work for us yeah for us um and it doesn't right. work for pat obviously because he plays the drums super fucking loud yeah exactly so i'm i'm down for playing loud man I don't know. yeah we're i, know I I'm mean pretty deaf as it is but we are still a punk band right like that's yeah. that's what we're calling this like yeah let's fucking be a little sure. bit punk still right yeah you know sure. <laughs> as punk as you can be in your 30s and 40s and, yeah right you know I would, <laughs> you know i don't know it's fun um it is. Yeah. All right. So then two more things. Strings. I use those, um, the, the black beauties, the DR black beauties. And they're just like the regular, I think they're 45 to one Oh fives. And then picks. I, I bought, I went to guitar center and I bought like every fucking pick and was just like, I'm going to play all these until I find like the one that feels right. Cause you and didn't I'm using, play a pick before you're in this band, right? Uh, no, I started, I started playing a pick when we started this band, I was like, I'm going to use a pick for bass until I'm like, okay. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And I feel like it's something like whether I continue to do it in the band is like whatever. I didn't have any. I was just like, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to like harness a skill that I kind of don't fuck with right, right. now. Yeah. So, um, yeah, these are done. Do you use it in Carl's house? I use it in everything. Oh, sick. Yeah. Every song on the album. Nice. So, except for some parts of Bike Ride. But they're these uh, Dunlop, you can't see that. They're the Dunlop Max Grip, and they're the .73s. I tried the .88s, and I tried the .66s, and the 73 is the sweet spot right in the middle. You're so good at uh, measurements and and part numbers and things. I have a picture of it, and it says it right here. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would have been I like was thinking, uh, Jesus Christ, man, Dustin is a savant with part numbers, like <laughs> or like model numbers rather. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, yeah, I I do know a lot of this shit, but it's also nice to be like, no, nope, that's definitely it. So, um, but yeah, that's my stuff, man. Done and done. I did use on bike ride. I did use the jazz bass with, um, their half rounds on it. So they're like not fully round wound and not fully flat wounds. They're like a hybrid string. Oh, yeah. I remember this. Um, on it just it, sounded, it so, yeah, it sounded like that, that song is like the way I play it is whatever. Like I'm just doing like a lot of weird palm mutes, like really high up or low on the fretboard for some reason that I don't know. It just fucking sounded better on that bass and the swells and stuff too. So yeah. that's what that song has on it is the, is the jazz. I got, I got to try and like, sneak that into everything i do a little bit you know hell yeah at least like one little part one little part of jazz bass yeah here you go little buddy there you go bud you're not (laughs) totally retired see (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome yeah i guess i uh all right i feel feel like everything on the telecaster okay i feel like you had a like written or not you know, maybe the telly was just like the guitar you were that was sitting by your couch or whatever mm-hmm. to write on. Yeah. I feel like you had a vision for your fucking guitar all planned out for, for all of for this. The fan? Yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause it's like, well, because we did a first, our first few practices, I played the telly, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, okay, we're a three piece and, uh, I'm trying to. I was trying to get that that sound, man. You know, the punk like overdriven. Yeah. And that was the weird part is like, essentially, I wrote these songs on the telly with these like twangy feels, um, mm-hmm. Americana twangy tendencies, or like that tapping thing and red lipstick. Like that was just some thing that I did, you know, on the telly, but uh. The telly's really like my favorite guitar, right? That's what I always yeah. find myself coming back to. But anyway, I was same. Did I? I was like, okay, I need, I need the Les Paul, right? And I don't know when I. I think I got the guitar, the three thirty five, before we started the band. Yeah, you I'm, had it. Okay, I bought it the December. We started in January of what twenty twenty two. Yep. Because it's 23 now, right? Yep. Yeah. And so I bought it in December of 21. Like, okay. Or at the end of the year of 21. Yeah. 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 I got you. But I was playing the last Paul and Flechette, and it was just too heavy, and the neck wasn't as what I wanted. And I was like, okay. So then I went to single coils, and it was the same, same story. It was like, oh, this isn't the sound that I wrote all this stuff with, right? Yeah. So I bought the 335. So then you and I had started our band later than a couple months later, took the telly, wasn't cutting it. And then when I took the 335 and played it through the fender with the overdrive pedal, it did something completely different. So essentially the recorded tracks on the EP are like the twangy telly track, the initial mm-hmm. ideas coming across. And then like overdrive, fucking gnarly three thirty five, like you know, dude, it it 60s, rips. 70s, like you know, that's yeah. really like 
I, I've had a whole aesthetic idea for my rig it's from the get-go, man. Yeah. These days you have like the seventies rock, like photo Instagrams that you can follow or whatever. But like mm-hmm. 10 years ago, I didn't know about that. Right. So I'm looking at all these like live photos of all these people in the seventies, just like, Oh my God, their shit looks so cool. Like, yeah. Like the curly cable. We'll get to that. Uh, but like, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I have the, uh, so we'll start with a telly is just a Squire 2008 classic vibe that I sold my Mexican fender. I was like, Oh, I'll pick up this Squire. It was cheap. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. A couple months later, I looked at my made in Mexico and I was just like, that's a good guitar. And like, I'm not, I'm just not picking, like picking it up ever anymore. Yeah. Because I bought this white one, <laughs> you know, and yeah. the, the, my Mexican one was like a 95 or whatever. It was a really nice guitar, but I just was like, somebody needs to enjoy this. So I sold it. Dude, it's but, weird too when you know, you know, like you have an instrument that you're like, I'm just not gonna play it. I'm I'm never gonna play that thing, right? And it, it, like, it's there's nothing wrong with it. Nope. The guitar is perfectly fine in whatever you know. But like, I've had that with basses where I'm just like, I don't know, man. I don't ever want to pick that one up, right? So it's just it's not, good. It's not home, yeah. right? Yeah, and then you can get like the other thing is like price branding whatever like that shit doesn't matter sometimes man you just pick something up and you're just like yeah it's basty right yeah you're like yeah. all right this is cool so i don't know the so. telly is super cheap and then the epiphone i just bought brand new because i had a i got this epiphone dot off of a friend of mine uh maybe like 10 years ago and i played it when i was <laughs> the bar band i was talking about last week i mm-hmm. played it in that and like I just liked the hollow body because I'm I'm bigger, right? I like the bigger yeah. guitar. Uh, I liked how it felt <clears throat> compared to like the SG or the Les Paul. Yeah. Uh, so I was just like, man, I want I want a new Epiphone, right? Like since the rebranding and everything, I was just like, these look so sick. Like, and then they did the the flame top, right? I don't. What is it called? Epiphone three thirty five figured or something okay and it's iced tea burst but iced tea yeah something like that i, I forget the specific color name i dude, right. i i work at a paint store so it's hard to remember specific color names because i hear so is that many a, is that a paint store color or a guitar color that's I don't a guitar know. color but yeah. it sounds <laughs> like a paint yeah. store color as well okay you know um <laughs> but yeah so i was like okay the tell back to back to practice right telly yeah. telly was too thin not cutting it hit the 335 and it just completely did something different so then yeah. I, that's why i recorded two tracks like instead of one stereo and then like overdubbing the lead parts when there was leads or whatever yeah i was like oh let's just do this it'll sound good to blend them it fucking does <clears throat> so um yeah 335 uh fender curly cable into tuner then jhs morning glory i took the red remote off but i do have a red remote for it <laughs> yep for the different channel switching um which i have room i should probably put that back on uh <laughs> <laughs> then into the jhs uh the AT or whatever, the at symbol one. Yeah, is that the Angry Charlie or it's something? It's not the Angry Charlie. Okay. It's that Andy Timmon, maybe. That's oh, yeah. Is that what his name is? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's the double button one. I was like, yes. oh, I'm going to get the double button one. And now I'm like, oh, I want to sell this for the single button one. <laughs> I got rid of a whole button on yeah. one of mine. <laughs> right, right. Fuck it. Yeah. But it's essentially just like a jcm sound marshall sound in a box yeah. right okay um for like the palm muti type parts or like the non telly sounding parts in yeah. the set you know um then the big muff the green uh nano the it's the modern current big muff. yeah it's like the their, muff. that's what it's called yeah they did the the, the reissue green, the green reissue russian muff yeah it's, and they put it in the small pedal form yeah the small and container. it's fucking perfect or enclosure whatever the hell they yep. call them <clears throat> yeah 
Uh, honestly, man, I, I probably need to get one of those. Cause that, that's what I use inside the, the MS three It's just like a green muff and I fucking love it. Like, yeah. All right. You want, you can borrow mine, man. I barely put it on, put it on for a couple parts. I'm, I was like, I think you need it on there, buddy. I know, but I was writing the other day <laughs> I was writing new stuff and I was like, okay, this is a big muff part because I never turned that thing on. Like, yeah, I, I have it for when I play by myself basically. Yeah. 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 And that's fine. Yeah. Uh, and then it goes into the walrus Juliana. Yeah. Yeah. I think it, yeah, the Juliana is the the one with the tap tempo. It's the chorus vibrato thing. Yeah. Uh, Beautiful pedal, man. As far as like, I love it. Cool looking pedals. That's gotta be, that's gotta be up there with like the best ones ever. This is really, I lucked out when I bought, Chorus, my first chorus pedal, uh, the oh, Bob yeah. CE3. There you go. It's got this freaking like vibrato thing going on. Mm-hmm. So when I was, and it, I lucked out, man. I got this at from Terry at Guitars and stuff. I don't know for like twenty bucks maybe, and it's an old uh, Japanese one. So it, it's pretty sick, right? But it makes this little hissing sound when I want to like go crazy with the oscillation oscillating part or like the modulating part rather. Okay. Of the like vibrato setting. It okay. makes this little sound. And I was like, okay, I need to get a new chorus robot vibrato, like the grunge thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. To my ear that, or like, that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm doing with it. Like, well, yeah. I mean, isn't that, I mean, that's like when the, the, when the vibrato is in, in, in like, engaged or whatever it's that's it's, that's what i'm doing in, to my ear but like I you're turning it. on the nirvana I use it, right but i use <laughs> it as just like a chorus like a straight yeah. chorus too as well like yeah backed off a little bit just to thicken yeah but uh and then the last one is a rotating i know you switch that thing around a lot <clears throat> well, yeah. what, the, the last originally it was the digitech oh fuck man i'm so bad with the names of them um <laughs> It was before they, okay, real quick, DOD and Digitech are back. Did you hear the mm-hmm. news? Yeah, yeah, awesome. I saw that. It was the line before before they closed the last time. Okay. They did that line with all the crazy artwork on them. I don't know. Yeah. The only one I ever remember is the the robot one, right? And it's the, mm-hmm. it's the only one that I never bought. <laughs> it's like yeah. the Vibrola or something because I had one. Um, but it was the reverb pedal. Mm-hmm. was on there initially and i used it with my pv because it's more of like martial sound but then when i got my fender amp i just always use the reverb on it yeah because like i don't soak it right i do like the slap back type reverb or whatever yeah not slap back but you know what i mean like that type of i don't soak it i just kind of use it for texture yeah yeah so i put a of- delay on it and that's fun but then i don't really ever use delay yeah so i put a flanger on it now and um (laughs) hear it first ladies and gentlemen (laughs) five out of six new songs have flanger on them (laughs) this is gonna be the flanger album but it's not like completely you know it's just like little parts here and there texture wise and it's like oh that's that's back Uh uh-huh you know that's kind of what I'm doing with it. It's like, oh, that sound is back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's, that's cool, man. Yeah, I'm into it. That shit always sounds so good. You have like quintessential like tone, man. There's like when you go into your distortion and and just start ripping, like I don't know. That's well, like that's the sound I though. hear when I want to hear guitar. You know my, what I mean? My clean sound is super clean, right? But yeah. like. If I want any sort of overdrive, I use the volume knob a lot to like yeah. back it down or whatever, and yeah. then just go full blast. Yep. You know, but then like when I'm on that Angry Charlie pedal or whatever the fuck it's called, the two button yeah. Angry Charlie, um, it's like I don't know, it's like always on or just not. Like I don't really. Yeah. Because it's like I'm. It's usually for like really parts that i'm jamming really hard i'm not trying to be dynamic with it whatsoever you know yeah for sure um 
I think guitar is a little bit more like that. Like there's a part of a song that is clean and then there's a part that is distortion. Oh, I went to, I I never told you, I don't think I went on this like tone quest, right? When I got back into guitar yeah, and I was hanging out with my friends in Dilltown a lot and uh, my friend, Josh Carney, he freaking, they call him fatty, uncle fatty, but, uh, (laughs) <laughs> He's, I, so I basically went to Uncle Fatty's freaking tone school, right? Okay. We'd like roll up to his house and there's like a fucking silver jubilee and like a tweed fender and like all the essential like tone amps, right? Yeah, yeah. And he's just like, here, man, Les Paul, Telecaster, whatever, you know? Yeah. All the guitars I already had and were into, but like we have very similar, you know, and he just like, you know, oh, this is what this does. Because, like, dude, when I was a bass player, I didn't understand what the fuck a tube amp was for a guitar, right? Like, Yeah, exactly. So when I got back into it in my mid-20s, like, I really wasn't aware of, like, the difference between a Marshall and a Fender, right? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was just oblivious, right? I always just played through a solid-state amp with, like, a distortion pedal or whatever, a rat or a metal zone. <laughs> like, Honestly, you probably you just know? play, like, whatever the fuck you bought at, like the used place that you had enough money to buy. Like, yeah, exactly. you know, I think you and me were exactly. the same where it's just like kind of didn't know what the fuck we were doing. And just like, yeah, whatever. I, I want a pedal. Mean, I'm going to get a pedal. Yeah. And you're like, okay. Yeah. What the fuck does this do? Well, that's when you, you know, were li- you were living up on Somerset Pike when I first got back into pedals and like guitar yeah. and stuff. Yeah. So I was hanging out with Carney a lot back then too. And I don't know, man, like just being able to plug in, the Les Paul into the Marshall versus, and then plug it right into the Fender. Yeah. And like see how different the pedals were reacting and how different the guitar pickups were reacting. Yep. It, it really like, I mean, Jess has been talking me down off the cliff of running two amps now and foremost for like months, but like, stop. It, it's, it's a stop lot. Doing right? that. Let him do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's just like, you literally, got the combo amp because you didn't want to carry that huge fucking half stack around man i'm like you're right like yeah yeah, you know. yeah. but like yeah i don't know if we ever play in john when we play in johnstown again i'm definitely running two amps like do it man fuck yeah all right i don't know it'll be fun but i don't know man uh and then uh so the, yeah the pedal board just goes into the fender blues deluxe the tweed one yeah the beast yeah crank it and hit it with an overdrive pedal and go to town yeah chuck berry man it sounds so good man it sounds real good i don't know man i like i really didn't understand the 335 or like the dot or like sheraton you know what i mean the es Mm -hmm. style guitar yeah i didn't really understand it and then like tom DeLong came out with that one when we were younger yeah it's just like oh that's cool it's brown with the racing stripe really wasn't into it right compared to his fender guitars like the pastel fenders were the the design i don't know the much sleeker like looking and uh but then he uh, also he also decided to start playing that thing like a fucking weirdo right yeah like this even like strap length and everything he i don't i just remember being like yeah it was a complete shift for sure yeah okay um but I, I don't know. I really didn't know what the hollow body was about or the semi hollow or like what the difference between semi hollow and hollow body were. Yeah. You know, but then I bought that dot on a whim. I actually traded, I had a jazz bass, random Mexican jazz bass. I had, mm-hmm. uh, it was, it was like my backup or whatever. Yeah. And I traded that for that dot cause I wanted to play in that bar band. And it like, I was like, yeah, that looks cool. Like, I'm sure it'll do acoustic sounding stuff too. Yeah. The and thing. I didn't realize that it's like a ripper of a guitar. Yeah. You know? And like, I got a good one too, which was awesome. So it just made me really like a fan of a semi hollow guitar, you know? But dude, that thing through my PV sounds <laughs> mighty fine. Yeah. Uh, Mississippi Marshall, baby. <laughs> A sweet ten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Was there I mean, did you have any Do like, you know why I bought that PV by the way? 
No, that's why I interrupt just, you. Yeah, cool. that's what I was gonna ask. Okay, go. On. Sorry. No, yeah. Okay, just, that, if that's what you were gonna ask, uh, do you know that Glenn guy on YouTube, the angry guy? He's, I think he may be Canadian. He does like Sound Specter Studios. He's, <clears throat> oh, he's angry. What the fuck? Blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. He randomly, back when YouTube would recommend you videos, mm -hmm. uh, he randomly like did a video with some working musician, right? And it was when I was like, okay, I gotta get a JCM, like, and I was like, okay, that's that's the sound I want, rather. And I saw he did a video of this kid who's a working musician that had he that's what he played for those PV Windsors. And I was like, wow, man, like that sounds fucking great. Like I'm going to take a gamble on one. Right. Yeah. So I bought it off this kid in Washington and uh, actually in 84, Pennsylvania, down by, okay. down by Washington, man. Down Washington. Washington County. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, <laughs> Clayville. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I bought it off of him. Uh, took it to practice. The tubes blew. Nice. Yep. At like not right away, maybe like a month later. But he actually worked on amps and told me that he wasn't trying to work on my amp or anything. I'm like, he was like, "Yeah, I got that, but it's just too fucking loud for the house." And I'm like, "Cool, that's what Sick. I want." Yeah. Um, and it and it sounded great, right? But then I just took it back to him and he serviced it for me. I actually texted him like a couple weeks ago when I thought my amp blew at the smiling moose. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he never got back to me. So I don't know what his deal is. I hit him up. I was like, Hey man, are you still working on amps? Like, cause he did really good work, but it was just his hobby. Right. Yeah. He yeah. was like some sort of electrical engineer or something. I don't know. I gotcha. Um, uh, I've got a guy around here though, if we ever actually need shit and he doesn't get back to you and something's okay. actually wrong. Uh, okay. same thing bought my, when I bought my SVT three, that's actually the second one I've had mm -hmm. long story short, same, same shit snooping around, not happy with whatever the fuck I had mm -hmm. that I bought used wasn't loud enough, whatever. Um, I had the same, the one you have now, the B two R or whatever that Ampeg. Mm -hmm. I had one, I had one of those. It might not be the exact same thing, but like. It just wasn't, I was in a bar band at the time. We needed to be loud. We played outside and shit and it wasn't cutting it. And they had to use one at guitar center that, that SVT three. And I thought it was like a ripping deal and was like, why is this so cheap? Blah, blah, blah. And I bought it and I'm like, this fucking thing sounds awesome. It's loud as shit. And then you go on the internet and you're like, oh, they break all of them. Every single one of them. There's a chip in it or something that fucking goes bad. So I use that for like a while and nothing ever went wrong with it. And then I started to like panic thinking like, I think I got my money's worth out of this. I need to get rid of it. So I did. And I bought like six other things <laughs> and then was not happy with whatever one I was on. Classic went, Dustin. <laughs> went back into that fucking guitar center and guess what was there? It might be the same fucking one. I don't know, but it was, it was used. It was there and it was like, dude, I'm just, I'm going back to this thing. Hell and yeah. uh, I, I took it to the dude I'm talking about. And, uh, I was like, listen, here's what he's, he's like an actual Ampeg dealer. Um, and was like, do you know about this? And he's like, nope. And I'm like, I like showed him, I sent him a link and I'm like, here's what happens. And he's like, I'll just bypass that whole thing and I'll build a thing and I'll put this in there and a chip. And we don't even ever have to worry about that ever again. And I was fuck like, yeah. fuck yes, dude do it. And he's, I was like, how, how much is that going to be? And he's like, Oh, uh, you paying cash. I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. He's like, I don't know, like 40 bucks. I'm like, are you fucking serious? That's awesome, man. <laughs> I was like, cool, done. That's have at it, man. 40 bucks. Here you go, buddy. So Hell now yeah. that, in my opinion, I'm like, dude, now that thing's bulletproof, but yeah, it's just funny. Like buy shit randomly off of a whim and then it breaks <laughs> immediately or, or doesn't, but like, you know, that's how you end up with like stories about this shit. I know. That's so awesome. Though, man. <laughs> I, I love the, like the hunt of gear, right? Yeah. It's just for sure. Oh boy. But yeah. so that's how you ended up with the PV. Yeah. Um, is that Glenn guy. Yeah. He's and then Sound Spectre studios, I think is what, which he's, yep. he's great, man. I, every time I'm like, I need to be amused by like, somebody yeah. who's real who or who appears to be real right yeah he, he seems to be like 
oh, fuck this brand if it sucked, mm-hmm. right? Like, yeah, exactly. Which not many people are these days on YouTube or whatever. Well, yeah, because everyone's like, worried about right, like their potential, image. yeah, like, potential sponsorships or yeah. income or money in the future, and it's yeah, like and that's understandable, right? I get it. So but it's like, like if Glenn's telling me like, hey, this is a deal if you get it serviced, like yeah. Oh yeah. So anyway, yeah, the kid worked on my amp. So when he after he serviced it, dude, it was like ten times better sounding. Nice. It was yeah. so sick. It, it, that was the thing. He was like, "Yeah, I bought this and I just didn't play it. Like, I tested all the tubes and they're fine. And yeah, you know they were. I was like ripping on it when I first bought it. Yeah, uh, just like tweaking shit, like doing things that I probably shouldn't be. Like really ripping it hard. Yeah, you know. No, well, I mean it probably also. I don't know how long the dude had it, but like sitting in some guys. Yeah. room right. for years yeah and then all of a sudden you're actually gigging with it and taking right. it in and out of practices and bumping it off of things yeah it and doesn't matter like, if you tested the tubes every fucking it, six exactly or whatever. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly it's like okay well you're using it now and that's a totally different situation than those tubes would allow they they'd still be there in perfect shape if they don't if, if the thing doesn't yeah, fucking move being used, right yeah yeah i don't know man so, so that pv uh, rips i don't know and it's like, yeah, yeah I, of course, because that's the thing, man. It's like every piece of gear that I have that is precious, I don't want to gig with it, right? Yeah, and it's for like, sure. That was kind of the thing with the 335. It's like, okay, I'm buying this, and it looks cool, and it's the one I want, and I waited for yeah. the one, the color I wanted to be in stock. Yep. But, like, I fucking play it, man. I mean, you saw me at the end of the – when I was all buzzed up at the release show, I was like <laughs> – yeah dude running the fucking fretboard off of my amp in a crescendo or something like i'm yeah goddamn pete townsend (laughs) what uh (laughs) oh my god i was like i remember bringing it up at practice and i was like dude did anybody see that because i literally like just remembered about that and pat's like oh yeah dude everybody saw that yeah (laughs) i was like okay (laughs) <laughs> this is funny. I'm like, man, I was just grooving, like making noise, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did Dave Grohl have anything to do with you getting that guitar? No. Okay. No. But I'll tell you that when when the bar band played Everlong on my first semi hollow, yeah. It did sound cool. Like uh, yeah. very good, you know. Okay, cool. But yeah. I, I just wanted it because I wanted the like humbucker tone, right? Yeah, the last Paul was just like hmm, the next too small, and it needs new pickups, and it's just like 1989 thing. Like, yeah, just gonna leave it alone and like play it at home and buy something with humbuckers, right? Yeah, okay. So I was like, okay, I'll just buy another Les Paul. And then I looked, and then I was like, oh, this 335. I was just gonna buy a Sunburst Les Paul, right? Yeah. And then I saw that they had a 335 figured with the flame. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I loved that guitar, the red one, the dot before I broke it. Like, oh man, I'm getting that. Yeah. Then it wasn't in stock for a fucking year, man. Yeah. Like the rebranding happened in 2019, I think. And I didn't get that guitar until like 21 or something like that. Like it was, took forever for me to buy that thing. Damn. I like knew that I wanted that one. Right. Yeah. 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 Cause it's like, they had like a blueberry burst with the flames and it's like, mm, that's not me at all. No. And then they yep. did this like purple burst and I'm like, that's not me at all. Like I want the regular like faded. That's why they call it iced tea, right? It's because if you didn't know the original fifties burst, <laughs> the nitrocellulose paint would uh-huh. fade from the UV yeah. from the sun or from the lights. So that's why everybody's bursts look different. Some yeah. are like super yellow. Some are super cherry. They changed the dye in the early 60s. That's why SGs are kind of like super cherry sometimes. Yep. If they're in good conditions. But if they're UV'd, they're usually brown. Yeah. Yeah. You know? For sure. But yeah. Uh, that's cool, man. It's I love those. I love that that like. It, it's definitely it, the the foremost guitar, right? Like, yeah, it is, it's and it's tool, uniquely, you know what yeah. I mean. Like, I, dude, I, I hate to say it, but it's it's above me on the rack, like, yeah. in its case, and that's where it stays. And if we have a show, I change the strings, and then I take it to the show and I plug it in. Like, I, it doesn't really get played at home very much. Yeah. You know, it's like the tool for the band almost. Yeah, I mean, electric <clears throat> guitars are kind of like that. You know, like there's 
they do their thing mm-hmm. when they need to. Yeah. And then if and then when when you don't need them to do that thing, it's like, you know, that's when you you play like whatever the fuck you're playing. That's like sitting around. And yeah, when, that thing. When you got this laying around, it's hard yeah. to like be like, oh, I, I'm going to pick up the thing that I play when I go out and play. Like, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, I want to play this because it's like, ding, 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 ding. yeah, instant for sure, surf, dude. man. Or like instant whatever, twang. Yeah. Fucking alt rock. A bunch of shit. So, all right, what? what's the next purchase for you? What's like, it could be a guitar or whatever. Like if I handed you, Oh, uh, whatever, a gift card right now. What, 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 like, not like, Hey, you can buy a 20,000, but like, you know what I mean? Like, what's the next thing? If I'm like, here, dude, yeah, we got a sponsor and you know what? All the money's going to Andrew buying something right now. What is it? Because I have so many guitars, right? Yeah. Let's say, say like, Somebody was like, "Oh yeah, we'll sell you these at like our cost or whatever." Yeah. Um, basics, a hundred percent. Okay. Count. Something I don't have, right? Yeah, yeah. Because like yep. I got, I have a Strat. I have the super super Strat. Yep. N- no Floyd Rose action, just like uh, lace sensor pickups, right? Mm-hmm. So the Strat, super Strat, SG, Les Paul, three thirty five, Jazzmaster, Telecaster. Yeah. Yeah. And not like I have two strats, but I'm not a strat person. One's Jess's actually. It's not yeah. mine. I have one, it's, it's one there. strat. Yeah. I bought it on my 30th birthday. Cool. Yeah. Well, that may be a story for another time. Fair enough. I like it. It's a, it's a good find, a gear find. Yeah. So, so baritone. To, speaking of that, I mean, I don't think they it, did that the on that album, but like, man, that thing is really, those like, are cool. that's been really piquing my interest, right? Is like the yeah. basics or baritone because it's something I don't have. Right. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, that'd be fun to play with. And like, what could I create with that sound? Thrice music is what you can create with that. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a ton sweet. of, dude, there's a ton of baritone, like Squire models too. I know. And like, dude, I don't, we live in the golden age of affordable gear right now. You can yeah. go literally like, dude. <clears throat> and that's the thing that that telly I have is from 2008 and like it's the stock pickups and yeah, they marketed them first. Like if you bought the cl- the classic vibe, I'm pretty sure it was just like a 50 strat or something. Mm-hmm. And then like two telecasters, a butterscotch blonde one and a white one. But they like, I forget which is in mine, but there's like Alnico four or Alnico three or five or something in one or the other. But like, yeah, they were marketing those at, at first. Cause I was like thinking back to like when I, when I found it out, it was a 2008. I was like, Oh, I remember when these came out. And then I was like, I specifically remember them marketing the Telecasters, even though it was the same model, just different color with two different pickups in it. <clears throat> like okay. the white one has, Say okay. For example, the white one. I don't know if this is true. I don't know what number it is, but yeah, yeah. The white one Which has combination. Yeah, I don't. The white one has Elnico five, and the butterscotch has Elnico six, or whatever. Yeah, and like those are the stock ones that are still in it, and it sounds great. The neck pickup may be dying, but I don't use it that much, so yeah. Whatever. Um, but yeah, we live in the golden age of affordable guitars. That guitar rips. Like, yeah, there's just so much market like competition in that realm you know, and, uh, it's just driven like the quality of those things to where like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like I don't look at like the rig rundowns of some of these like famous people, you know, like they could have whatever the fuck they want. And some of them definitely do. Right. But Mm -hmm. like there's people out there playing shit. That's just like, yeah, it's a fucking whatever that I grabbed from, let me see what, you know, guitar center. And it's like, cool. Cause it fucking works. Especially even in bases, like there's some, there's a lot less competition in bass, but like it's, it's so like, there's a price yeah, point that's there. His name. Jack Pearson. He played with like the, okay. Al- the Almond Brothers band. Yeah. He's like an older dude. Right. And he's like, yeah. Oh, I bought this Squire affinity or whatever for my nephew. Yeah. And like this dude has like fucking fifties, less Pauls and fifties fenders on the wall. Right. And yeah. he still plays like Squire. The, and it's not even like the classic vibe, dude. It's like, yeah. It's like a bullet or something because it's light and he, it's easy on his back. Yeah, man. <clears throat> and it's like, it's the thing. 
it to me that's just like okay it it's all about the fingers man and like yeah not all about it but you know what i mean like well yeah for sure you can sound like yourself on a fucking bullet strat or on an american strat if they're both set up right exactly yeah you know assuming everything is like okay buy a shitty guitar right and you set it it up and not have like fret sprout or like yeah all the bullshit that like came came with every cheap guitar when we were young yes like all of the terrible shit that made people not play guitar yeah and honestly man some of that shit is gone like you can get those guitars and you're like i kind of need to adjust the strings Mm -hmm. but like frets are rolled dude, like I, you well, know that's, nothing that's slicing saying, you man. open dude that jazz bass that i bought for jess yeah it is it plays just as good as my yellow mexican deluxe or whatever yeah the active one that i had uh-huh yeah it, it's it plays just as good and it's like a fucking a pack affinity jazz yes yeah. I, ha- I bought um like a music man the sterling ones yeah, yeah. dude yeah, they had, a, you know, there's like there was a little it was like a ding and dent at Guitar Center. Yep. And I'm like, why is this so cheap? And the guy's like, oh, it got like messed up. And I'm like, where? And he showed me and I'm like, you know, you have to like bust out the microscope. And I'm like, are you fucking serious? Like, yeah, I'll take that. I played it and I'm like, I was playing that. And and I mean, dude, no joke. I had, you know, Brittany there with me and I'm like, grab that one because that one is. $2,300. It was a real, like, you know, Stingray. legit music man, right? Stingray. Pulled it off, plugged it in, played it. And I'm like, okay, like, it's heavier. Is that better? Like, I don't think so. Like, it right. felt, it felt, you know, you're like, okay, th- I get it. But like, sound wise, I'm like, dude, it's like not even noticeable. And this thing is, I don't know, 450 bucks. Yeah. yeah you dude. know, and I'm like, we live in the golden, um, golden age of affordable guitars, man. Yeah. And that was the so, thing because we do that Epiphone I bought. I literally yeah. just bought it brand new and had it sent right to my house. Like, yep. I, and it, I literally it's just fine. had to do minor adjustments and it ripped. Yeah. Like, so I don't awesome. know how to set guitars up. Right. But like, yeah, you know, I had to like yeah. intonate it and that's it. Dude. Shout out to Sweetwater for having, you can look at individual guitars when you're on their website. Like yeah. you, so like, that's you how can, I bought my, yeah, dude. my Nate Mandel. Yeah. I was like, just give me the lightest one. Yeah. I just went through, they had one that was 10 pounds. One that was eight pounds. One that was nine yep. pounds, whatever. And I yep. was like, give me the lightest one. Right. Boom. I don't care. Right. And you, the, like the, the detailed photos. You're like, well, that one has a little bit more like, dude, just give me the lightest one. Send yeah. it to my house. I mean, dude, if like, we're being realistic, done. right, the next guitar, right, proper, like, electric, I yeah. want, I want a re- like, a Les Paul again with a fat neck. All right. But I, that's that's the thing in Sweetwater. Yeah. It's, like, sleuthing Sweetwater, and then, like, whenever the time comes that you want to buy it, it's, like, I always just, like, give myself some time, right? And it's, like, yes. what's, what's the average? Okay. Oh, there's, like, uh, say, like, the average is seven pounds, right? And it's, like, mm-hmm. oh, there's a six-pound one. Yeah. It's like, there's usually like a six pound one. And it's like, Oh, there might be a lighter one then. And then it's uh-huh. like, if you just like continuously, like, just like, th- if you don't stress it, sometimes you can get like, Oh shit. There's one that's like right under six pounds. Like yep. snatch, you know, for sure. That Sweetwater rules, man. I don't know. I, I want to go, let's go and take a road trip there. Dude, I'm down. Let's man. do it, man. They have like a, That'd be a so slide awesome. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that place It'd seems be cool so freaking cool. I haven't been out in the like plains area in a long time. Yeah, probably some either, man. Was, I don't know. Let's, my let's teenage play years. Some, let's play some Midwest emo shows <laughs> and go check it out. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! I'm into it. But cool, man. Yeah. All right. So I don't know. We've been rolling a while. I think. Uh, how long did we go last week? Uh, like a little over an hour. Cool. So That's kind of like, where we're at now, man. All right. Well, I'm fine with that. I think we really like wrapped up all the gear. We don't really use much else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I use can't that talk. Audix mic or what? I don't even know the brand. It might not even be Audix. Yeah. I've been carrying around the same mic for like ever. Right. It's your mic. It's yep. my mic and I just plug it in and go. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't, I just use cables, whatever. Yeah. I don't have anything fancy there. Um, you know, I don't know. 
we can like curl like yeah. I think yeah. I mentioned that. I mean you mentioned that, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um power I have just like a a chokes, whatever. Chio. I don't even know how you pronounce that word, but like the C I O whatever the fuck. How, I don't uh, even know how you like I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I have a walrus uh power supply on my board as well. I don't know how yeah. to pronounce it either, but it's the little the little guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know. I kind of um, wish I got the big one now, but eh, whatever. Yeah. I, I just, like that was the one thing that was just like, okay. what's the best one? And then like everyone pointed to that and I was like, okay, like yeah. I just want to be done with it. Cause th- that is the shit that like, I do not care. Right. I don't care. I just want to plug something in and it works and it works. Right. And then some of the pedals need different voltage voltages like 9 16 whatever yeah i'm like okay does it do that it has a little button i can do that cool done i don't right. i i could care less about that shit yeah no I, doubt. I want like i want the pedal in and i want to be fucking turning knobs on it you know yeah yeah I'm not messing with power supplies so like right and I, I love that thing it just works so hell yeah sweet. mine does too really well even though the like power cable thing's a little shaky and it kind of always has been i want to yeah wonder that's if that's a common problem maybe i'll shoot them in email and ask them yeah give them a shout out yo mine's, Walrus, mine's what bulletproof up? dude that thing's built like a tank yeah so it's sweet but hell yeah all right man well i think that's it dude all right man i think that was Ooh. episode two or two the dudes in the books in the books deuce deuces oh it just stopped we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna bring it back bring it back <laughs> We're going to roll it out. Um, yeah. You can yeah, always so, uh, find us on Spotify if you like what you hear at the end. Yeah. Foremost PA on Spotify. Yep. And um, yeah. I think Come it's find the us. same thing on Instagram as well. Yeah. Same thing on Instagram. Or maybe like um, Foremost Band. I guess we yeah, know that. We probably should. Yeah. I think it's Foremost. Uh, yeah. That's just Foremost PA. But you know what, that. man? I think if anybody's listening to this second episode at this late in the game yeah now that the outro has rolled three times yeah has rolled through already they know we'll us out. and they already follow <laughs> us on instagram yeah well if you don't check us out yeah um and then also we've been talking about getting some guests on here yeah we still have a drummer to address in this whole situation but we kind of went through like our history and then our gear we'll get pat on and then um we'll just keep the keep the ball rolling man Cool. So, all right, dude. Peace out. Peace. Later.